Hey everybody, Doug here. I wanted to take you on a tour through my portable instant replay setup. So this is something that's kind of new to me. I've had the ability to do instant replay for a long time, but until recently I've had to use big bulky equipment like desktop tower computers instead of something more portable. And I've decided within the last few weeks that I was tired of that and like whenever I'm asked to travel and do instant replay, I needed something that was gonna be more portable. So I'm going to take you through what I've got and take you through the hardware. And then I will, in addition to that, actually show you kind of the workflow for what it takes to actually perform instant replay for an event. So with that, let's dive into the hardware. All right, the key piece of hardware that actually makes this all this work is a Decklink 8K Pro card from Blackmagic Design. This is a card that has four inputs, four outputs. Well, it's actually combined. That's four connections, and each one can be either an input or an output, so you can't do both on a single connector at one time. So for instant replay, for me, I actually you normally use this as for inputs, and then I use a separate device, which I'll discuss in a moment, for output. But that allows me to bring in four cameras simultaneously. Now, the tricky thing about this thing is because it's a standard desktop PCI expansion card, it's not going to fit in the laptop. The answer to that is this enclosure that I have over here. And you can see that the card is actually installed into this. This enclosure, uh, I'll show you from here from the Amazon listing, their website appears to be down at the moment. But this is an OWC Mercury Helios 3S Thunderbolt 3 enclosure. And what this does is allows me to take just a th Thunderbolt cable out of the back of the computer, run that to the box, and then that expands out to a PCI Express slot where I have that card. That way I'm able to do capture of four video sources into a laptop. Now it takes kind of a beefy laptop. You know, the, the uh, Dell XPS machine that I've been using for the last few years wasn't up to the, uh, wasn't up to the challenge. It was only able to deliver about 40 frames per second instead of the 60 that I need. And so I had to get something a little bit more powerful. And so that brings me to the HP Omen 16 uh, laptop that I've got here. This is one that I picked up at Best Buy just very recently, and this is a Core i7 12700H uh, CPU. This one only has 16 gig of RAM. I will be upgrading that at some point, but the 16 gig of RAM is plenty for running instant replay, so I don't have to do that right now. It has an NVIDIA RTX 3060 laptop GPU in it. It came with one terabyte of storage. I knew that wasn't going to be enough, so I added the second SSD uh, Sabrent Rocket and it's two terabyte variant. So I have a total of three terabytes of storage on this laptop. I'll use that rocket drive uh, for the video for doing instant replay. And with high quality, that gives me about four hours of, of time, of recording time. And if I drop it to standard quality, that goes up quite a bit. It's like eight, I believe it's eight, eight hours that hour. And that'll give me enough for most of the sporting events that we happen to do. So yeah, the two terabyte drive was kind of the right happy medium in order to make that happen. All right, so that gives me the four inputs that I have on the back of this enclosure. Uh, and that allows me to bring in four cameras, but I also have to have an output for whatever I'm playing back. And in order to do that here, I've actually used a Blackmagic Design Ultra Studio Monitor 3G. This is also a Thunderbolt device. And what I did here is I just used the daisy chain output from the back of this enclosure into that device. And that actually leaves me with an additional Thunderbolt port on this particular laptop if I was to need it for something else, high speed storage, or if I wanted to expand with another one of these or whatever, that gives me options to, the option to expand the device even farther. Now, speaking of expansion, if someone was wanting to build something like this and they needed to bring more cameras in. Blackmagic also has the Decklink Quad 2 card, which you're seeing here. That is a card that has eight connections, and each one of those can be in or out. Now, the reason I didn't go with this one is because this one only supports high definition. I wanted cards that were actually capable of doing 4K, and that's why I went with the Decklink 8K Pro. And that gives me up to four connections in 4K, and this other one would give me four, or give me eight connections and up to HD. I'm trying not to buy HD only products at this point if I can get away with it. And so the 8K Pro was the better choice for me. I haven't had to do replay for any more than four cameras. And so that works out. And if I did need to do more, I could just get another one of these cards and do basically do the same thing with it as well to give me additional inputs. 
All right, the next piece of hardware is a controller to control the vMix software. And that's what I've got in front of me here. This is an X-Keys XK68. This one has the jog shuttle control on it, and then 68 buttons, which are programmable. The nice thing about using X-Keys with vMix is it's supportive natively, so you don't have to run any third-party software in order to make those communicate. The, communi the commands to make the buttons do things are all done directly within vMix itself. And so it's actually rather easy to do. There's some limitations there, which would be nice if they didn't exist, but it does work pretty well, and I'm pretty happy with the way that's set up. And I'll be showing you what these buttons, various buttons do here in a few minutes. The other thing that I have here on this desk, which is not absolutely required, but is nice to have, is a little portable monitor. This is one from ViewSonic. These things, you can get all sorts of these things off of Amazon or whatever. They're pretty common. They're pretty, there's a pretty wide variety of them. Uh, the one thing you got to watch out for with these is a lot of these will only support 60 frames per second. You can't get them to do uh, 30 or 24, so be very careful with that. If you do need 30 frames per second, you probably have to step up to one of the 4K models, but fortunately, they aren't really much more expensive than the HD only models like I have here. So in terms of all the hardware here, I've got links to all these things down in the description for the video down below. So if any of these things interest, interest you, I'd really appreciate you clicking on those links. That really helps out the channel quite a bit. Now in terms of the software, I'm using vMix as I mentioned earlier. This is the most affordable solution that I've been able to find. It's actually pretty flexible in what it allows you to do. Uh, the cost of the software varies based on which license you get. I'm actually doing the subscription on this, which I believe is $50 a month, and I'm, I'm turning it on and off as needed. So if I go through a, a period of a few months where I don't need it, I, go, I will cancel my subscription, and therefore I'm only paying for it when I use it. And that way I'm actually saving some money uh, in terms of paying for the full license that, that uh, I would need in order to access the instant replay features. Now the paid subscription like that allows you to have instant replay for up to eight cameras, I believe is what the limitation there. And so if, if you're able to get away with left fewer than eight cameras, you can probably actually use vMix as long as you got a reasonably powerful, powerful computer to run it in order to take care of instant replay uh, for most situations. So let's actually take a look at what's going on here with the software. Now you can see here on this screen, I actually have uh, four different inputs configured. And what I've done is I've got the front camera, the one that's right here in front of me, uh, set up as camera one, and then my overhead camera set up as camera two. And then three and four are just copies of one. I've got an, an SDI distribution box just out of camera frame here, uh, which allows me to duplicate that signal. I just wanted to make sure that I had something on all four inputs so you can kind of see what that workflow looks like. Uh, but they are they, they are the identical signal between inputs one, three, and four. Okay. Beyond that, we have a replay A and a replay B, and I'll describe what that means here in a little bit. But that basically means you have two outputs from the instant replay module, and you can switch back and forth between those. In terms of what's going on up here, this is a preview and a program. So if I was to select the, for the replay for the preview and then hit cut, now. We're looking at the instant replay there on the upper right portion of the screen. And I'll, I'll explain more about what that is about here in a minute. This is the main screen that's actually used for instant replay. And very describe very briefly what's going on here. So we've got our A output, our B output. Again, there's two different outputs from instant replay. And then in the upper right, we have preview of the four sources that I have configured with the software. Uh, again, you can do up to eight with vMix, but in my case, I'm only doing four. Below that, we have a list of the events, which are basically the clips, the moments in time that have happened that you want to make note of, so you can actually do instant replay. That's kind of how a lot of these instant replay systems work. So they're recording all the time, basically they're constantly recording, and what you do is you mark moments in time that you want to be able to either uh, do instant replay or save as clips later on, and I'll, I'll explain more about that in a bit as well. But from here, it's just basically showing the start and end time and duration for each one of the clips that I happen to mark. Um, and then in addition to that, I can choose which angles from that moment in time that I want to be able to play back. And I will ex explain that more in a moment. Below that, we have buttons to mark in and out points for a clip. And they've also got these three buttons here to record the last five, the last 10, and the last 20 seconds. So you, at any point in time, you can just tap one of those buttons and it will instantly mark the last five, 10, or 20 seconds. And then on, the, on my controller here, I have actually got buttons set up for other durations as well, particularly three seconds, which is for events that happen fairly quickly. 
All right, down here in the lower left, we've got our settings button. Then we've got a button here which actually starts recording. So if you, in order to do instant replay, you have to be recording. So I'm going to go ahead and tap that right now. And there we go. Now we're recording on all four cameras. It's recording separate files for each one of those things. And they're recorded in just standard format. I believe it's an AVI of some sort. And if you wanted to, you could extract those or just copy those uh, after the event is over. So you actually have isolated recordings from all your cameras just by the nature of using vMix for, for doing instant replay. The center section here is for controlling the outputs on the two different buses. So we've got our A bus and our B bus, and there's also one that, that combines the two. Um, so I'm going to be working here primarily on the A bus, and I'll demonstrate with the, the ability to use both here in a little bit. Additionally, additionally you can actually choose whether you want to see uh, what, cameras one, two, three, or four on here on, on, on your bus. So as you, you can see as that's playing back, it's showing cam or angle one, but if I click on two, it'll switch over to angle two. And those are time synchronized. So it, when I cut from one to another, you can see that it's actually the same moment in time that you're seeing going on. And you're free, you're free to do that at any point when you're playing back video. Although there's a different workflow that might make more sense for sports instant replay as well. Uh, below that, we've got our, con our controls here for basically we're auto replaying the last event that we've marked. And then we've got one that play, plays the selected event, whichever one is marked in, or highlighted in, in orange up here. And then we've got buttons to whether we want to loop playback and then if we want to include music. The music option is there for people who want to do highlight reels that show up at the end of, a, an, end of a, an event or whatever. Uh, I personally don't use that, but it is there. And over on the lower right, we have the ability to control the speed of playback. So if you notice, the, the playback here in the upper left on A A1 window is moving at 50% normal speed. And I can speed that up to 100% or slow it down to 25 or whatever. There's also the slider here as well. So if you want, you can control the speed of playback there. And uh, yeah, you can adjust that at any point. So you don't, select the, you don't have to select the speed ahead of time. You can actually change it while the clip is playing. So if you wanted to start out slow and then ramp it up or start out slow and then slow it down, you're totally free to do that. So with that, I'll show you kind of the basic workflow of what it's like to, to run the instant replay system as part of an event. My job as a person who's running Instant Replay is to monitor all the four different sources, four different cameras here, and see when there are things that are happening that are going to be interesting to see as part of an Instant Replay or a highlight reel at the end of an event. And whenever I see something that's interesting, I can do, any num I can do one of several things. I can press, for example, the Mark minus 3 button here I have on my controller, and that adds a new event to the list, which contains that last three seconds. I'll go ahead and do one with five seconds one with six seconds, and then one with 10 seconds as well. Uh, so as I press those buttons, it's, it's automatically creating markers for those moments in time. Now, very often, those moments are not exact uh, for when things start and stop. So you probably are going to want to tweak those things. And what I, what I can do here is I can use my select previous and select next buttons here I have on my controller. And then from there, I can use my jog shuttle control in order to find new in and out points for a particular clip. So let me go, I'm go ahead and pause. There we go. So I'll select that clip. And then I'm going to use my jog control here to move ahead. All right, so when I look at the camera, there we go. So that'll, that'll be my new endpoint for that particular event. So I'll hit the set in button. And I'm going to hit play pause. I'm going to set it to 100% just so it makes it easier to find. All right, there we go. And then I will stop it right here. So I'll set that as the new out point. And so now that clip is set uh, with new in and out. And then when it comes time to play that, all I have to come over here and press the play select. And there you go. It just play, it plays that clip. And as I, as I do, you notice on the bottom of the screen, there's a countdown letting me know how much time is left. And that's really useful when you're communicating with a technical director to let them know when your instant replay event, your moment in time, is about to end so that they know to cut back to live video. Now, we would just watch that at 100%. Now, if I set that to 50% playback and then press play select it again, you can see that that bar takes a lot longer and it adjusts just the time, reigning time accordingly based on the new playback speed. So that way, you're, you're not looking at the amount of time in the original clip. You're looking at the amount of time it's going to take to play it back at the current playback speed. And that's super, super useful in order to make sure that your technical director has a heads up as to how much time remains in a particular video clip. 
Now, another thing that can be done here, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put this on a nice slow speed so we have a moment. But I'm going to press play selected, and then I'm going to come up here and press the A2 button here on my controller. And that's going to switch to the overhead camera uh, for that particular moment in time. And then I'll switch back to A1, and that will take me back to camera 1. I can do that at any time while replay is going on, so you know the... A portion of the event is best seen from one angle, and then there's another portion that's best seen from another angle. You can kind of watch for that and then press those buttons to change those angles as well. However, we find that most of the time for instant replay in sports, what we do is we show both angles back to back. So we'll show, it, show an event from one angle and then show the same event, same, same event from another angle as well. And the way we do that here is we can check these boxes here. So I'm going to say I want to see it from angle one and angle two. I can also do the same thing for my controller, and that's what the, I have these toggle one, two, and three buttons. So if I toggle th three on or off there, we can see that. And then what happens when I press play selected, let me go back to normal speed on this. I'll, I'll press play selected. It'll play back angle one, and then it'll switch to angle two and show that same moment in time, basically rewinding, showing that same moment in time from a second angle. And you can do that for as many of the angles as you happen to be recording. So basically, if I turn on 3 and 4 and play selected, you're going to see that it's doing angle 1, switching to angle 2. And then it's going to angle 3, which is the same as angle 1. And then it'll do angle 4, which again is the same as angle 1. So you're able to see those back to back. And you can actually set this up where, there's, or where it does transitions between those. Instead of just a cut, you can have it do a dissolve or any of the other uh, transition types that are supported by vmix okay so what's with this a and b thing here so we've got two different buses here and two different outputs that we can use for instant replay the reason we have that is so that you can continue to prepare clips while another clip is already playing so say for example i'm gonna go back let's see i'll go back over here to this list of clips and i will start playing this clip and i'll do it at 25 percent. so i'll start playing that clip and say, I know that I need to get another clip ready to go immediately after that, after this one. So what I can do is I can switch over to B and then choose another clip or a handful of clips or whatever and have those ready to go. So as soon as that first one finishes or even, uh, even beforehand, I'll go ahead and click on play selected. And now it will switch over to the B output and play those clips as well. And from there, if I need to get another one ready to go, I can go back to A, select that clip, and then when it's time to start playback with that one, I can go ahead and select play event on that one as well. So that just a lot gives you the option to have uh, two separate players that you can be queuing up videos on one while the other one is playing. So you can kind of bounce back and forth there. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier for people who are doing more advanced replay where you know you need multiple clips back to back, but you don't have time to go find them right away. Uh, and this gives you a little bit of time, a little bit of buffer there in order to make that happen. Now, a lot of times people who do replay, instant replay, are asked to create highlight reels for the end an event, of an event or a halftime or intermission or that kind of thing. And the way we do that is by taking selected clips and then we move those into another storage location, like a holding, holding uh, bin or whatever, whatever you want to call it, uh, for later playback. And so what we've got here in vmix is we have these 20 tabs right here and you can use those any way you want in order to organize your clips for me what i use these for would be the different breakdowns for an event say for example if it's a football game that might be quarters or if it's uh, for a, a basketball game that might be halves or uh, for boxing it might be the, the rounds that happen within within the, the match so as an event goes on i will move from one tab to another. And you can actually give these names. You don't have to just leave them as numbers. You can actually make it a little easier to remember what's going on with each of those. So what I will do as the night goes on is I will actually copy events from each of the different bins into one final bin, which is my end of show highlight reel. So for example, if I wanted to include this particular clip right here as part of my highlight reel, I might say I want to see that with angles one and two, so I'll toggle that on. And then what I'll do is I'll right click on there and say copy to, and then I typically use bin 10 as my end of show highlights. So I'll say copy to 10, there we go. And then if we come over to 10, we can see that I, that clip has just been added there with those two, two particular angles. And therefore, when we get to the end of the night and I want to show my highlight reel, all I have to do is I can do one of two things. I can come down here and say play all, or I actually have a play all button here on my controller. So I will press that. And there it goes. It's now playing everything that's in that list back to back. 
Again, you can add transitions, and you can see the remaining time down here. To let, let the technical director know how much time is left for each of those things. And I actually like to vary the speed a little bit. For, for example, when you get to the very end of a sporting event, and a team has won, or a team or a player has won a particular event, I will slow down uh, that very last clip and to basically give more time to, for the viewer to, to see that reaction of when they know that they've actually won. So that's, been, that's very, very handy there. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up to 100%. And then as we get to the last portion of the last clip, I'm going to slow it down pretty greatly here. So here we go. We've got just a few seconds left. Four, three, two, one. I'm going to slow it down to just 12%. So there we go. We're now watching the 12% there. And then pause and freeze on that last frame, showing the victory as has just happened from the eyes of the person who has won. So anyway, that's kind of the gist of it. Uh, it's a very high-level view of how this particular system works. But this system does work really, really well. Really, really well. So all of this is nice and portable, nice and compact. I can easily travel with this. The laptop fits just fine in my backpack. The uh, Thunderbolt enclosure and the controller fit just fine in checked baggage or even carry-on baggage, no problem there whatsoever. And so I'm able to travel with an instant replay system that actually works really well and is uh, quite effective in, in order to perform that function. So if that's something that you might happen to need for your event and you don't want to make that investment in equipment, uh, just please note that I am available if you want to hire me to do so. So the contact information is there in the description down below, or you can just go to djp.li slash contact uh, if you'd like me to come help you out with your sporting event with this system here. I think that's going to about do it. So if you have any questions about this, you can leave those down in the comment section down below. Or even better, join us over on Discord. I have a server set up there, totally free to access. You can sign up there and join in a discussion with me and other people who work in the video production industry. And we talk about all things related to video and other, other technology type things as well that are sort of related in addition to the video st video equipment itself. So if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I try to do video production related content around once a week. I don't always succeed, but that's the, that's the goal. And I am uh, eager to answer quite people's questions and help out and instruct the community on things that I have learned have, having done this sort of thing for, for many years at this point. So that's going to do it for now. So thanks, everybody, for watching, and have a fantastic day.